what were your thoughts about our last meeting? Yeah, it's good. Uh, I'd like to move on to that. Okay. So <clears throat> with uh, with basements. Basements, yeah. Okay. And then we can add later on the service, the other one, kitchens and bathrooms, separately if you want to do it down the road. Okay. Um, yeah, I would suggest you uh, get really profitable in one area, then then expand because people want to see you being the expert on on one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm getting confused. Did uh, did we talk about branding before, or just lightly, or did I show you a PowerPoint presentation about branding? No, just as talk, we hit we did. Okay, I I told you about you know how they used subliminal messaging in the eighty. Yes, yes. In the eighties and so on. Okay. Um. All right. That's what I want to do today. Um. Do you have any questions before we start? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we get, um, how does it work this, um, uh, like uh, when we um, do branding, include all these, everything in there, right? Like uh, the whole thing going to be like site, websites, and um, basically logos or whatever it is, designs yep. and everything. Yep. All in there. Okay. Yeah, everything. Um, <clears throat> technically, we're talking about a business in the box. A business in the box is about branding, the business blueprint, uh, websites, social media, uh, hiring strategy for for employees, training programs, you know, really everything that a business requires um, over time. Okay. Okay. So the same thing about, you know, designing and building a house. Before you can design and build a house, you need to know exactly what the house is going to look like before you buy a shovel. Yes. <laughs> so, or hire your first employee or start digging the foundation. You can't dig the foundation for a house unless you know what the house is going to look like, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing, same thing for a business. Even though nobody does it the right way, you need to know exactly, you know, what the business is going to look like before you start. Yeah. Right? Because you need to know the people to hire, the equipment you need, and, and so on. Okay. Good question. Any other question? Um, so the website is going to be, um, where is it going to be hosted? And is it going to be under my company name or how is it going to work? Um, it really depends on the payment uh, stage. Uh, obviously, we have to do a lot of things up front. Um, you know, some of the things that we do uh, sometimes are between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars, and obviously, before we can start transferring all this stuff to you, because these are major assets, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the website alone is fifty thousand dollars. So before we start transferring all these assets over to you, we need to know that you know there's a relationship between us, and you're not going to just steal the business. Okay. Um, what do you mean by um, a relationship? We're going to do the business, right? Obviously. So um, is that going to be like separate thingy or is it just going to be all together in the package? Um, well, your best deal is going to be a package deal. Um, but there's a lot of the stuff you can do yourself. Um, uh but, the, but you have to also decide whether you want to be, you know, a, a basement renovation or finishing company, or you want to be a, a sales company that, you know, builds basements, or you want to be in the marketing industry for companies that build basements. I mean, there's so many different segments, right? There's so much work you need to do that if I were in your shoes, I would concentrate on being the best basement finisher possible and delegate everything else, right? Because you can't be the, the expert at, you know, marketing and branding and, and sales and, and social media strategies and, and blogging and creating videos and editing videos. And I mean, you could spend a hundred years trying to do everything yourself and it's impossible to design and build a great company by yourself. You need to you need to have great employees. 
mm -hmm. around you. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> so the, let's say we start right now and we go and let's say um, <clears throat> down the road, let's say a year from now or two years from now, what's going to happen if we say, okay, I now I know how to take care of things. So I'm going to do it myself. Um, is um, everything going to be, is it how, how do everything do by that time hopefully is transferred to you right yeah and everything by that time you will have employees you'll have virtual assistants you'll have salespeople. you'll have crews uh you'll have a branded marketing i mean you'll have you know 12 months from day if you're not doing at least a million million dollars in revenue i really didn't do a good job for you Okay, I, I'm having a really good feeling because um, I know I can do it. And well, it's it's. I'm glad that you have a good feeling, but it's really not about you. It's about the system. Yes, right? it's the system that attracts profitable clients. It's the system that attracts quality employees. Right. And employees are going to come to you because they see opportunities for advancement. They see opportunities to get into management. They see an opportunity to maybe even buy a franchise and help you finance the franchise. You're going to attract them because they're going to see real opportunity, not fake opportunity. It has mm -hmm. to be real opportunity. And if they see you, you know, doing really nice projects, you know, driving a nice vehicle, making some good income and getting quality of life and your clients are happy and you're getting great reviews and you're producing videos and you're getting video reviews and stuff like that. If they see that happening, then they're going to say, I want to be part of that. How can I be part of this? Yeah. Right? And you, and you say, and we'll train you and your salespeople to do this, you know, give me two years of your life or at least a year and a half of your life. Bust your ass for me. Do a great job. And after that, I will help you to become a project manager, a franchisee, um, you know, a, a sales manager, whatever you want to be. I'm going to create the opportunity for advancement. But first, I need to know that you're going to be, you know, a devoted employee for at least two years, uh, show me loyalty. I'll show you loyalty back. I'll give you benefits. I'll give you a nice salary. I'll give you advancement opportunities. You know, we have an internal training program to help you do all this. So, and, and when they see it, and it's not just words, when they see it happening with other employees, they're going to say, yeah, I want this. Okay. Right. So, I mean, we've done this so many times. I mean, when I first started my construction business, that's how I had to get devoted subcontractors by saying, hey, you know, right now you're busting your ass trying to find work. You're busting your ass trying to do the work. You're, you're doing marketing. You're trying to hire people. You're trying to, you know, uh, train people. It's just too much, right? Yeah. Be loyal to me. I will find you all the work that you will need. I will put the next 10 jobs ahead of you. Just be loyal to me. Give me a good job. I'll be loyal back and I'll put 10 projects in front of you. So you don't have to worry about whether I'm going to pay my mortgage next month or where my next job is coming from. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, that's important yeah. for them. Be I loyal to me. I will be loyal to you. Give me a great yeah. job. Make me look in front of the client and I'll give you better and better jobs each each, each time. So Okay. <clears throat> it, I mean, it works. The construction industry is about building relationships. Yeah. I'm going to share the screen so we can start okay. uh, looking at some of this stuff. Uh... Whoops. That's not what I wanted. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about this. I'm going to go over it, you know, uh, a little bit so you understand what I'm talking about. Branding is about building uh, trusted relationships. Branding is about making a promise 
to your future potential clients that you're going to do an awesome job. Branding okay. is about subliminal messaging. Branding is understanding psychology and using psychology to use their their subconscious mind to say, I want to work with this company. And most people will say, well, I don't know why that is, but I get the warm, fuzzy feeling or I, you know, it, it just feels right. Right. Yeah. And and when they say it feels right, then they they make the decision in the right direction. So branding is part of the business blueprint and is, you know, and part of the business blueprint is 33 chapters in a textbook. So when you design a business or a business in a box, it's not just about, you know, branding, attracting employees and so on. It's 33 chapters that you have to uh, build. And we'll talk about the other things that are part of the business blueprint. So one of the most important parts when you're doing uh, marketing or branding is to be part of the community. So, you know, a company can spend a million dollars online, but if they're not part of the community, they're, they're going to feel like they're going to they spent one hundred thousand dollars instead of a million dollars on branding. Yeah. When you do it correctly, you can make it look like um, you spent a million dollars on uh marketing when you only spent a hundred thousand dollars but you're using strategies to make it look like you you spent it on you spent a ton of money and part of that is to be part of the community and this is why we use truck wraps to make sure that you're seen as part of the community you know mm -hmm. these trucks will be seen at you know jazz festivals um you know um uh community events, rib festivals, and, and, and so on, okay? <clears throat> so branding, as I said, subliminal messaging is something that is illegal. When they had popcorn on the screen of the theaters, popcorn sales would jump up, um, and that's illegal, but there's still stuff you can use uh, to get inside their, their brain and build trust and build trusted relationships, okay? So here's an example. Uh, I think I told you that the average painting yes. company gets to $800,000. Because of this company has wow, wow is that promise you're making to future potential clients. This company does $100 million, okay? Because they're using um, subliminal type messaging to make that promise. You know, hire us, even though we're more expensive than everyone else, we will make you happy. And that's why they're doing a hundred million dollars. Okay. So this is um we've been updating these truck wraps now for for more than 10 years, and we've been testing. This is actually a 3D character that stands two and a half feet above uh the truck. So the idea is to get noticed. You know, if you're driving this vehicle on Highway 401, um, at, you know, for, Highway 401 has 400,000 vehicles a day. So when you get a really noticeable vehicle, you get the wow factor, especially with, you know, a man's head standing above the truck by two and a half feet. And what we're doing for this particular client, they, they're a handyman service. We're cutting it at the roof line. We're putting a hinge here so it folds down so they can go and still go into the underground parking. Yeah. Okay. So, and we test a lot of different colors for this company. Um, and as I said, this was one of the companies that I was uh, asking you to come and work for. Uh, and there's, uh, they're going to go with about five different brands. Um, this is actually a door knocking campaign type vehicle. And it has the speaker system on the side here and a double sided TV. These TVs are about $5,000. They're two sided TVs, the same type of TVs they use for, for billboards and stuff. They're outside TVs. So we've been testing a lot of these brands and we've updated the cartoon character because that one tests better. Now, this is the one we're thinking for you. Uh, we haven't updated the cartoon characters yet. Um, this is actually old branding. 
Um, and we're going to update this cartoon character with a, a more up-to-date cartoon. But again, he sticks three and a half, uh, two and a half feet above the, the van. So it's a 3D effect. And if you recall, a lot of the billboards have 3D where there's something sticking above the billboard to get, uh, to get recognition, get uh, notice, get your eyeballs on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine driving this truck around your neighborhood, around jazz festivals, you know, to church or, or whatever mosque, and they keep seeing this vehicle everywhere. Then they see, you know, the same type of marketing and branding online, Facebook ads, newspaper ads, and they see the website and, and maybe a radio campaign or, or different things. And they usually need to see you about 10 times, 10 to 15 times before they act. So the more places they see it, um, and sometimes we hire or not hire, sometimes we rent these vehicles to courier companies. So they drive up and down the highway so they get seen everywhere. So there is a company out of Brampton, a courier company out of Brampton that will pay you to rent this vehicle because they sometimes don't have enough vehicles. So instead of renting it from budget or wherever they go, um, they pay you slightly less, but they have a clean vehicle and a beautiful vehicle they drive around and they're promoting you at the same time. What do you think of this vehicle? Yeah, it's good. I like it. Can we agree that if you saw this on Highway 401, even you know going the other direction, you're going to look at it and say, what the hell was that? Right. Of course, I would look at it, yeah. Right. So it's a very noticeable, very bright colors. Um, it's designed to get attention. And especially with with the this character, right, the cartoon character really stands out. You know, picture yeah. it without the TVs. Again, the TVs are designed for you know, for, for marketing, when the vehicle is going to be on the highway 401 or DVP or whatever, or 410, uh, where do you live? You're in Oakville? Hamilton. 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 Or whatever high, uh, 403 in Hamilton or whatever it is uh, at the grocery store in, you know, every popular spot at the bank and so on in, in Hamilton, then they see the online marketing um, and there's a speaker system uh, you may have to move yourself so you can see the speaker system. You can drag me on yeah, the other side. Move. Yeah. So these are designed, see, same thing with the ice cream truck. Remember when you were a kid, the mm -hmm. ice cream mm -hmm. truck comes down your street. All the kids go crazy and they run to the street. Yeah. Um, it's the same type of scenario. Uh, for one of the companies, we hired a comedian that does voices. He does Trump's voice, he does Obama's voice, and he does a number of voices. And we created what we call traffic trivia. So at you know eight o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, when you're stuck in traffic, this thing is moving along. There's images happening on the TV screen and the, the speaker system is doing traffic trivia and ask the, the gentleman in the gray Audi behind me, uh, what is, you know, whatever. It's a pre-recorded message, but it sounds like it's live. And of course, the driver is wearing uh, noise-canceling headphones. For us, it's, he's going to be driven crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But he's concentrating on driving, and the pre-recorded message is uh, is doing its job. Yeah. Okay. This is how we think we can get 20 calls per day per truck. If you close 20% of those at, let's say, $60,000 basements, I'm sure you can see how lot. that would add up, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, we did a, 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 um, a truck like this for a roofing company, and I, I'm pretty sure I told you already, they closed 37 jobs on one street um, at the average of $16,000 per roof. OK, yeah, what I we told... do, what we do for them is on Saturdays, we do a barbecue in the summer um, and we invite all the neighbors to come over and have, uh, you know, a hot dog or a hamburger and they see the show happening. You know, the guys are installing a roof. 
and they're looking very professional, they're engaging. And a lot of times we get real estate agents as volunteers to give out the uh, the gift bags. So they knock on doors and, you know, sometimes we have T-shirts, water bottles, you know, gift certificates, two for one gift certificates for restaurants. Uh, so there's a lot of giveaways. So when you're doing a door knocking campaign, you're not just bothering people, you're giving valuable stuff away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these door knocking campaigns are valuable. They can probably, you know, two weekends can probably fill up your summer for one crew in terms of uh, basements. Um, yeah. I'm just going to show you some of the other stuff, some of the other colors. Um, obviously, we can test different colors. Um, there is also this design, custom built basements uh, in red. But we find the other colors to be, especially the one in pink. I don't think I saved the one in pink. The one with pink lettering applies and was more friendly to women. And we find that a lot of women initiate the first call. So custom built basements, outrageous basements, um, fabulous basements as well. The, all these... I went through the uh, the list. As I told you, we have about a 100, sorry, 10,000 websites. And I picked the best ones that uh, that have been testing better. And of course, .com is important because if you want to franchise into Canada or US, a .com yeah. is mandatory. Uh, the TV screen is showing a, a theater. Uh, we used to make a lot of money in the theaters, especially in the soundproofing and wine cellars and water features and uh, and uh, fireplaces and stuff like that. Fabulous basements <clears throat> or pool rooms or billiard rooms uh, to entertain the kids and the neighbors. Yeah. Fabulous basements, beautiful basements now. Uh, and financing is going to be a huge part. I would say about 60 to 70 percent of your projects are, are going to be financed. I told you about the group um, a dry basements. See, a lot of people don't have, um, you know, comfortable basements, and that's why they never finished it. Um, so you have to solve that problem first. Cozy basements, uh, leak fixed would be one of them. So I would have at least one truck like this to fix the problem because you can't even get a conversation going with them about finishing a basement because, you know, everything's moldy, everything's musty. They can't even store stuff in the basement, especially mm -hmm. older homes in Toronto that only have six foot basements uh, and underpinning is going to be a huge part of that. But fixing the leaks um, Oh, and fixing the leaks, have your salespeople go out and quote a job for fixing the leaks, sub the workout 100% and wait for them to be ready to have their basements finished, right? It might be a year or so because they want to make sure that the basement is fixed. We care waterproofing.com, um, leak fixed. And leak fixed is past tense. It's been fixed, right? So yeah. it creates confidence dry basements and so on okay so so all these names are are great to compare with or compete against custom built basements but i think custom built basements is um should be your lead company and everything works under the one company and again yeah. you can use your existing company um and and all your taxes and purchasing and everything is under your major company. Then you have the different brands operating under your company or just register a numbered company, 5678896 Ontario Limited, operating as custom built basements. OK, and that should cost you, I think, around two hundred dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars to register. So even and under this company, I can register. Um... Under the corporation, I can register. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to register brands. As the government just wants to make sure you're paying your taxes. They don't yeah. care how you run your company internally. They just want their taxes. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Okay. Um, 
Where do we go from there? Well, we basically just need a go ahead. We need to update the websites. Um, the website is not coming up live. I don't know why. Well, because we're still working on it. And um, the um, we were updating it for someone else. Then we got stalled. We've got too much work going on. This subcontractor is really behind on, on his work. So stuff that should have been done two months ago. Um, and it's my fault because I keep giving him other priorities. But, you know, custom built basements was something that fell be between the cracks because, you know, we had someone interested and we didn't have someone interested in it. Um, and that's why I felt between the mm -hmm. track, the cracks. Because but, uh, you don't think there's another company called custom built basements? Uh, there might be. There might be someone in the U.S. or somewhere in Canada that uh, that's using that name. But in terms of a web presence, they can't use custom built basements. Yeah, because it's already been taken. Right. So, so I mean. They can operate under custom built basements, but they cannot have a website under custom built basements, right? Yeah. In order for you to protect your brand, you might want to register as a trademark custom built basements. But I, you know, there's so many ways around it. I wouldn't waste your money. Um, I would, I would just have the lawyer send them a cease and desist letter, um, and scare them out of using it you know, from a, a, a lawsuit. Yeah. But well, you, you, you really, you know, well, it's not copyrighted, um, but it's, you know, the, the lawyer can phrase it in a way they're, you're, they are damaging your brand and you're going to sue them for damages. Um, most of the times, you know, eight out of 10 times, they will stop using it because nobody likes to be sued. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. And as I said, I think I have a couple of boxes of t-shirts, uh, already with custom built basements branding on them. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's ready to go. We just need your go ahead. And we need to figure out how we're going to work together because I, at this point, I have no idea how much money you yeah. have available um, and uh, how we're going to do the branding. As I said, you should hire at least three virtual assistants. Um, you know, I think that's going to be your best return. We can also do pay-per-click, but pay-per-click is not that cheap. Um you know, depending on how fast you need projects. Well, so so maybe I, start with pay-per-click, get one or two projects, then let your virtual assistants take over. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so I don't have a lot right now because I um, already put it on the business and some of it and used and stuff like that. Um, we can, what we can do is um, every project, whatever happens, we put away for marketing and obviously you're going to be, you say there will be what? What would be your fee? Like a uh, package that starts from five to. Um, last well, time it, you took yeah. See again, we don't have anything that's written in concrete, because again, I want to develop a relationship with you long term. I want to franchise this company, right? Yeah. I want to turn you into a hundred million dollar company, and when you get above the you know the five million or the ten million, that's where I start making money. Before that, you know, it, it, you know, we've got so much invested in, in this system that even if you pay me 10 grand, I mean, it doesn't even come close to covering my expenses, right? So mm -hmm. we work backward, we work, we bend over backwards to make you successful. And when you're successful, eventually we start making money. So the faster we can get you to 5 million or $10 million, the quicker I can start making money. So okay. what I would like to see um, is 10% of each project automatically gets put aside for marketing um, uh, to, to keep the company growing. 
Okay. Really? okay. Um, and we should start with at least five thousand uh, dollars for me to help you start this process. Then you know we can let it go until you have your second or third project. Then we start on the monthly uh, program, but we need to have the virtual assistance. Um, and that's why I want to contact the other company. And by the way, he hired three people and he's already sending them to me for training. So I think the rest of the resumes are going to be open. Uh, I need to meet with him for lunch uh, because, you know, through email, I, you know, he hasn't budged. But I'm pretty sure if we sit down for lunch again, uh, I'm pretty sure I can get some of his resumes and we can probably save three or four weeks of time trying to go through resumes. Um, okay. So, but I see the, the virtual assistants crucial because they're going to confirm your appointments. They're, you know, they're going to respond to your emails. They're going to do all the stuff you shouldn't be doing social media posting and, and responding to, to comments and posting comments and stuff like that, because you need those trusted relationships. You need to build a lot of relationships with investors, interior designers, uh, you know, um, uh, real estate investors, right? People who buy properties and, and buy them properties that need to be fixed up and sell them as income producing properties to first time home buyers, right? Yeah. So, and that's something okay. you should do later on as well. Yeah, but later on when we have something, you know, it's not, right now it's not the time for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, so give it some thought, schedule another call for tomorrow. Let's find a way of working together. Okay, great. All right, have a good night. We'll talk tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.